Super Fun Party! Actually, it stands for Small Form Factor Pluggable, which is probably better. Hello, players. This video is sponsored by FS.com and sent me these SFP Plus transceivers. If you have ever searched for 10 gigabit networking equipment, you have probably come across SFP, SFP Plus, and SFP28. Then you came here to find out what that all means and what you can do with them. SPF ports are common on switches like this one. This is the S3950-4T12S from FS.com. And while they look complicated from a user perspective, they're actually quite simple. With most consumer equipment, you connect everything together with a cable like this. This is a standard Cat6 Ethernet cable, or this might be Cat5. Either way, these are Cat6, terminated with an RJ45 connection. So how do we connect this to a switch that only has SFP ports. Well, that's where the transceivers come in. Transceivers come in a bunch of different configurations, which we'll get into in a minute. So for now, this is an FSP Plus transceiver with an RJ45 port. So the ethernet cable goes into the transceiver and then the transceiver goes into the switch. I know what you're thinking, the cable is already terminated. Why have this extra step and extra hardware? Well, there are real world benefits to doing that way because the transceivers don't really care about the cable between them. This transceiver accepts an RJ45 connection, but this one takes a fiber optic connection. And this is a DAC or direct attached copper cable with SFP pre-terminated. So if you need to connect this switch to another one over a huge distance, like 100 or 500 meters or even 10 kilometers, you would probably go for fiber optic because it would be cheaper and ethernet just doesn't go that far. Then use ethernet for close devices or a DAC cable for connecting two or more switches that are in the same rack or something. Now here's where things can get a little bit tricky, but if you know what you're looking for, you'll be okay. All transceivers are not equal. They all have their own specs and any reputable site like fs.com will clearly display the type of cable and maximum length the transceiver can support. So while Cat6A, for example, will support speeds of 10 gigabit of up to 100 meters, you want, if you want to get that full distance, the transceiver will also have to be rated for 100 meters on both ends. But this is a good thing because transceivers that support shorter distances are often cheaper. So with some planning, you can save some cash if you know how long your cable runs are gonna be. If you are using fiber optic as your cable of choice, both ends have to be connected to a transceiver. However, ethernet has an extra trick up its sleeve. Because Ethernet is layer one and layer two of the OSI model, the other end of the Ethernet cable does not have to plug into a transceiver. You can use the RJ45 connection that's already on there and plug that into any other device that has a standard RJ45 port. Easy peasy. Now you've heard me mention SFP and SFP Plus. There's actually a few more and they're all to do with speeds and what kind of cable they can support. SFP will handle 100 megabit and one gigabit speeds. It will only do 100 megabit over ethernet and gigabit with either fiber or ethernet. SFP plus will do 10 gigabit over fiber, ethernet or DAC. SFP 28 has speeds of 25 gigabits per second, but just over fiber or DAC. Why is it called 28? Well, if you know, let, let me know. Apparently it's for encoding overhead, but when the usable throughput is only 25, it should be called 25, right? I look forward to your comments. SPS 56. 50 gigabits per second, but also just over fiber or DAC. And there is also SPFDD, which isn't used yet, but will do speeds of up to 100 gigabits per second. The good news is all of those are backwards compatible with each other, so you can use a 10 gigabit connection with an SPF 56 port if you like. And although everything is standardized, mixing manufacturers isn't recommended as it can introduce some quirks. There is another standard called QSFP, which gives four lanes per port. So QSFP Plus will do 40 gigabits across four 10 gigabit lanes in one port. Handy if you are connecting multiple switches, but QSPF ports are not compatible with SPF ports. It's an entirely different standard altogether. It's, it's an, an entirely, entirely different, different standard. standard. There are other specialized transceivers and cables, but they're a bit out of scope for this video. I try to stick with RJ45 wherever I can for the home because it's cheap, durable, and all of my 
consumer equipment supports RJ45 ports. If you're going with fiber, there are two types of fiber optic cable, multi-mode fiber or MMF and single mode fiber or SMF. Which one is better? I'll let the uh, network pros argue that one out in the comments. But generally speaking, you would use single mode for very long distances and multi-mode for short distances, but they are not interoperable. So you would use both MMF or both SMF transceivers in one cable run. So although there's a couple more things to look out for with the setup like this, use getting a network switch like this one with SPF plus ports to use with RJ45 connections is a valid choice and a good way to go. And I think this is a good way for me to go. So I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching and thank you to fs.com for sponsoring this video. If it was helpful, there's a like and a super thanks option. And if you're wondering what to watch next, well, I have a video on 10 gigabit home networking, uh, setting all that up using this very switch. So until next time, keep playing and be excellent to each other.